Welcome to the Effed Up Podcast. So I'm here today with a bunch of industry giants in the financial services industry. We have over $100 million in net worth between all of us here. So if you're looking to get into a higher level individual, if you're looking to uh, become an entrepreneur, this may be something that you're interested in, so stay tuned. So I guess I'm gonna start this off kind of going through who we are. So I'm gonna start with you. My name is uh, Johnny Perez. I'm from San Bernardino, California, Marine Corps. Did four years in the Marine Corps, uh, did a deployment out to Afghanistan. In three service. No, I appreciate it, yeah. You know, that's always the hardest, like, question to, or, or like, response to that. I can't, you know. No, you're sitting there. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Wait until it gets to me. Well, I'm yeah. a massage head. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did four years in the Marine Corps. Uh, I wanted to stay in, but, you know, I have a wife and three daughters, so we had to transition out, and then I transitioned into the restaurant industry. Uh, and then I went kind of, I was there for a couple of years, I went from job to job to job until I found this company. So we, we started, which you'll, you'll talk to him here shortly, but we started about 10, almost 10 years ago at a kitchen cool. table. 10 years. Kitchen, kitchen table. table. Yep. Surprise, awesome. Arizona. Here we are now. Awesome. Crazy. What, what, what made you switch? What was the one thing, if you could say the one thing while you're like, you know what, I want to get into the financial services industry, what was it? You know what, surprisingly, it's not what everybody thinks. It's not the money, it's not anything like that. It, it, for me, it was time. It was freedom. My so dad, my dad. you having a boss? It, yeah, okay. it's crazy. So, so it. my dad was always working. I respect the man. I love the man, but he wasn't around a lot when I was young. So okay. I wanted to be the difference for my daughters because I got three daughters. Awesome. So time is everything for me. Hi, awesome. So if you guys like freedom, well, that's 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 what this industry offers. Fact. Seriously. Seriously. And he's in the Marine Corps, giving freedom there, financial freedom. You got, you got like both freedoms. Everywhere we go, it's always freedom. That's it. That's you, you guys, you guys know. <laughs> you get freedom, and you get freedom, and you get freedom. All around. Everybody's getting freedom. That's awesome. Yeah. So first of all, let's let's be real. Let's give give them all the names. Let's come back real quick, real fast. All right, so we'll come back. Hold on, say this is important. Yeah, because this is it is. It's, it's not really Johnny. Here, pass the mic. Pass the mic. All right, so this is, this is real serious. This is a real story. story. This is so, a real story. So, so, so my real name, my birth name is Juan Ramon Perez Jr. Oh. I don't speak any Spanish, by the way. But I'm Mexican and Puerto Rican. He only has the accent. That is, that, and he and, rolls his R's. And I roll my R's. And if I talk fast enough, it sounds like I'm speaking Spanish. So that's always the truth. <laughs> you go Juan over there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always right, cool. It's, it's terrible. It's but terrible. I always say that. I always say, like, I don't speak Spanish, but when I dance, my body speaks Spanish all day long. <laughs> that's it. So that's important. Hey. That's an important note. That's it's in that's, his hips. Right? But, uh, but yeah, and then I go by Johnny, and then JJ. That's pretty much it. That's it, dude. Solid names. Yeah, he came into, he came into saying Johnny. It's not true. It's not true. So we're actually brother-in-laws, too, by the way. Which He's is super, to my sister. Which is super awesome. But yeah, so I'm Jason. I'm uh, from Phoenix, Arizona. Born and raised out there. I was in the real military branch. The Coast Guard. Coast Guard. <laughs> Coast Guard. It's just crazy. Corps. We're going to go Marine Corps, Coast Guard. I don't know what's going to get what's worse yet when he goes Air Force. Oh, yeah. we're coming, <laughs> we like the military channel coming around. But I know. I uh, Yeah, so I worked. My background was I was in the military. I actually uh, had kids young, so I started a family pretty young, went in the military, and then um, education for 10 years. And for me, getting into the industry, and I know it was cool. We got to talk the other day a little bit. was more just uh, financial literacy, helping families. We all got that servant heart, especially with this group. So when I saw the lack of financial <clears throat> education that was out there, uh, especially – you know, sit with my pops after I learned it. 57 years old, not learning information. It uh, lit a fireman, and now it's been a decade. I want to say that again. Lack yeah. lack of financial education, right? Those of you that are watching, you've probably seen a lack of financial education in your own life and in your family's life, and that's one of the biggest things I think everybody here can agree that brought you on board was you've seen something 100%. happen in your life or someone's life that you care about, and you're like, if they only knew where they would be today, right? Yeah, dude, and after a decade, man, it's really crazy to see, like, you think you'd be, we'd be farther, we still got 70% financial literacy in the United States of America, Facts. and we've been going hard, so right. that's me. I'm Andre Pennington. Um, I'm an asset protection attorney, yeah. state planning attorney, and financial professional. How long I, were you an attorney board before this? Just curious. I've been an attorney for, I can't remember if it's 18 years or 19 years now, okay. but yeah, cool. for a little bit. So um, for me, even just becoming an attorney was an achievement. You know, um, I kind of started out, I think, a little bit behind the eight ball where the expectation was to lead somewhere else. So for me, I had to do everything the hard way, right? It wasn't like, I'm gonna do this and I get a little help that, that direction. It was more like, you know, I had to really do it. And a lot of times I made mistakes and had to fix the mistakes, but um, that one decision changed my life. Um, I always wanted to serve, so I went to the Air Force. So I became an attorney. That's why you were out in the Springs. That's why I was out in Colorado Okay, Springs. now it yeah. makes sense. Yeah, that was okay. my first assignment. Okay. Um, and that's where I learned estate planning, and I was also a trial attorney, awesome. uh, that first assignment. So I spent a total of 18 years in service, so I did five years active duty. 
I did the rest in the reserves. And actually, when I made the decision a couple of years ago to go into financial services, that's where I did my separation paperwork. To me, it was so important to give my soul to this. The best way I can explain it is when I made the decision to go to law school, it was like it was a unique circumstance, but this fire lit inside of me where I felt like I almost didn't have a choice. Like, I have to do this. No matter what, I have to do this. Then it went dormant for a while. Not that I wasn't, I did all my stuff. Like, you know, I was one of the best trial attorneys in the Air Force. Became a very good attorney, but I met these guys, these couple of guys in a break room. I started over in life. I met them in a break room and, and their energy was just contagious. And I, I wasn't ready for it at the moment, but I stored it and I was like, but I'm going to partner with these guys at some point. You probably started rubbing your shoulders. Dude, massaging. <laughs> you I mean, that's how I got you, huh? I should let Jason tell that part <laughs> how he saw me. You should tell that part how you saw me in the break room. Yeah, dude, listen, no joke, right? You never know when an opportunity presents itself. I literally was sitting in the back corner, and it, he had that face like, nobody talk to me, right? Like, he had that whole look, right? Uh, like, dude, don't talk to me. And me and Johnny come bopping in, and I'm like, there's a human being in the corner. <laughs> What's up, bro? He's like, what? There's... Right? But, uh, hey, that connection, man. The conversation was a lot different back then for, for you, Dre. That was that was crazy, but just like I think you were kind of cool where you were at. Yeah, I was I was I was in a spot where I had done everything I needed to do. Right. Financially, I was I was good, comfortable. Um, I was a sole practitioner. I made my own hours, came and went when I wanted. So so for me, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do these certain set of hours because I grinded my whole life, you know. So it felt good to be comfortable for a minute yeah and that's where i resigned to really yeah. and did you tell me where you're from real quick Andre? Did you tell me yeah you're i'm from right? southern california as originally so where we, from. we see uh you know it's a success recipe right there southern california i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Are you, anybody from southern california yeah. here we go let's get around let's get around the yeah, let's here. Get around it's, getting, it's getting thick right now it's getting thick over here <laughs> right. go ahead yeah, so my name is uh kenny Emanuel. um you know i, I got into the financial industry over five years ago by mistake Believe it or not, right? So I was I was a general manager of the number one private gym in New York, right? Brooklyn, New York, across street from like the Broccoli Center. Yeah. So it's only business owners that was there, right? Business owners, CEOs, and you know they would just train. So I'm doing a sales process, closing a training deal because that's what I do, right? I'm pretty good at well, people and pretty good in sales. And a guy heard me and said, "Man, you should go into financial services." I'm like, "I'm from Flatbush. What are you talking about? <laughs> Where? A Flatbush, New York." Like financial services, we don't know. I don't know anything about finances. My, my parents, you know, just got here in 1980. It's like the know? perfect example of lack of financial yeah, education. Like, yeah, like if if I was the perfect example, it's literally 100. percent I didn't really know anything about finances at right. the time, but I knew how to make money. But I didn't know how to take. I didn't know how to leverage it, Facts. grow it, or I didn't even know how to even understand my relationship with money. Right. right. Most people don't know what their personal relationship is with money. Right. right. Are you getting Are you getting to know it? Right. Or, or do you understand what it is? Because a lot of times our understanding of money go based off the reflection of our parents, right? Because they are they are they are our first teachers, right? So I didn't really know anything. So going to French, uh, start taking my license. I failed three times. Mm. I, you learn a lot about yourself when you fail. Fact. And I told myself, if a person see value in me and believe believe in me, I'm gonna continue doing. It. I'm gonna persevere. So I end up passing the third time, and you know. 30 days in to the indus um, into the industry, he dies, right? Crazy. Wow. So I started working with a, a company, and you know, the first year and a half, I made zero dollars. But I didn't care about the money. I care about the information. Because a lot of people attach their purpose, to, their purpose to money. I attach my purpose to helping people. So you know, because I saw that my purpose was actually to help people, if I learned enough you know, and I fell forward, I'm going to be in a position to be able to help people, and you know, five years later, look at this. That's awesome. Right? Mm -hmm. hey, Ken, Kenny's my new favorite speaker. Ken, you're my new favorite speaker. Dude, I want to <laughs> allude to what you said yeah. about not making any money because a lot of people, like, think about college, right? I compare this business, right, to college. You go four years, six years, sometimes eight years, and you don't make a dime. Wait, you give this four days, and you're like, okay, I didn't make any money yet, right? So, so I, I will say, when I first got into the industry, it took me about six months to make my first dollar in this industry, yeah. and I ended up coming back ten years later. That's why I'm sitting here today. But this was ten years ago, and. 
because of the people that I met in the financial services industry, people like Patrick Bet David, I ended up getting mentored by him for about a year and a half, which was really cool. You know, you guys know Jeff and, and David and other people, and their mindsets resonated with what I wanted out of life, and it gave me a belief system. And over the last 10 years, I became a multimillionaire outside of this industry, right? But I, I accredit this industry to have them, to, to, that gave me the mindset that I have today. So people that come into this, you know, we're not, you, you may not, you may not resonate with every single thing that we do, but you're going to surround yourself around a hundred million dollar net worth. That's valuable to hear and talk to people that think that way that most of you don't have access to. Fact. And that's something that a lot of people don't even think about. I recruited based off of that, right? Oh, I don't want, I don't have any interest in the insurance side of it, the investment side of it. Okay. What about being mentored by people that are worth millions of dollars? Do you have that? No, that would be awesome. Well, then come work with us. That's it. Right? And that's something that I, want, I wanted to bring up because it's really important. How many of you guys have learned from people that are more successful than you that's helped you get to where you're at through this company and other companies like it? Right? Yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. that's that's. That's awesome because if you don't make money right away, you can all you can grow. That's the biggest thing. Well, here's the other thing too to that, like, because my experience was slightly different. At the time, they were just starting out, and I was the more successful one. And these guys came into my life and completely changed it for the better. I mean, I had some money, but I've made millions since meeting them. Right. So it's not. I always I want to say that clearly because sometimes it's just the courage to say what's in your heart to the next person like they had no idea in the moment i'm quite sure of that they were going to light that spark in me right and now the way we've done it together and in partnership what we're doing together we help so many people so i want to plug that piece too like sometimes it's the knowledge that you have that's going to spark the next person and help them change for the better right right that's so true yeah and, and also oh, I thought I was all you know I, I want to piggyback off of what Andre is saying, but you know when we talk about purpose, you know everybody know you believe your time is limited, Andre. One hundred percent. Time limited. Yeah. Time limited. Yeah, you 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 only got so much time on this earth. So when when I think about purpose, I think about time. Like that little dash is really what really matters, right? All of us here spend our our life on the doorstep of death, but we don't know when it's gonna call. We don't. We don't know when it's gonna call, but if we are able to, you know, work towards our purpose and actually help people, that's, that's a life worth living. Got it. It's a fact. You know? so it's a fact. Just that dash is so important. Yeah. Who's, right. who's this strapping good looking young man across from me? So my name is Ed Cross. Um, I was not in the military, but when I was younger, I was a professional wrestler. Trust me, ask my brother. I used to do all the moves on him. After that, <laughs> I became a ninja. Right. I could throw those Chinese stars at you my mom. You have three ninjas. That's what's been growing Man, up. Yeah, I, I could throw those Chinese stars at the wall like nobody's business. Now, my previous career is, is as an executive. I retired as an executive. I'm a master electrician. Um, I did 30 years in construction industry. I didn't grow up wealthy. Nobody wealthy grows up and goes goes into construction. <laughs> I promise you. But um, I learned a lot, and I, I did. Um, I learned how to make money, like you said, but I didn't know what to do with it. I was that was debt free. When I met these gentlemen, there's a common theme here. I was a car guy, had multiple cars, everything was paid off. Life was good, except I wasn't living the life. I was never home. I was, I was out working to provide what my family got to enjoy. Come to find out they didn't really enjoy it as much because I wasn't there. But it is what it is. You know, that's what we do. We sell our dreams for a salary. We, make, we build somebody else's dreams. And, and I was at the top of that food chain. That's what I was doing. And Jason showed me something different to do with my finances. And I was like, there's no way this is real. There's no way. And he said, why not? What do you mean? Why, how come it's not real? I said, I've never heard of it. I manage $40 million worth of work every year and I've never heard of this. It can't be real. So as he's, I'm multiple screen guys, he's telling me this stuff. I'm Googling, I'm fact checking everything. <laughs> the I whole thing, hey, live time. This is a real story. <laughs> hey, live time, everything. live time. And by the time we got done with that call, I had like 15 tabs open on the Googler. And I'm like, I got some work to do. I got some reading to do. Like this stuff is legit. And it was the financial education. And then I literally, I joined the business just because I said, hey, He's telling me, like, dude, you'd be great at this. You, you got the mindset, and you'd be so good at it. You're so handsome. You're such a good dancer. Like, What's that got to do with financial <laughs> services? You didn't say that. Like, What's that got to do with financial Whenever services? It takes. Whenever it takes. Art of seduction, 101. <laughs> yeah. but, but I was like, dude, like, how do I learn more about this? He goes, oh, you should just join my team and get on my trainings. And I said, okay, how do I do that? And that's, that's literally how I got in the business. I just wanted to learn more, get more financial education. And in my why now with Mansion Financial, it's 
to give other people the same opportunity that I was given. It's, it's life changing information and we need to share it with more people. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's important about that too, so no joke, he's, he's literally Googled. He's Googling as we're going, right? I didn't know he was Googling. I didn't know he could have three screens at once on a computer. I'm, I have one and I'm good, right? But, uh, but this is important with life. And this is why, for me, these associations are important. He was really spot, he was spot checking everything I was saying to see if I was lying to him. 100%. So here's the world we live in now. We got to be authentic. We have to be real. Even though the information, like he had a way better understanding at where his starting point was than mine and finances. I mean, maxing out his 401k, doing all that stuff. But he was literally checking. When I got done, he said, all right, at least you didn't give me misinformation. You didn't yeah, lie to me. He didn't BS. Right? And I said, dude, and he asked me questions. I didn't know the answers to some of them. Some stuff he was asking me in the moment. I'm right. a professional. Hey, dude, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure let me get the answer to it. And uh, and now, dude, he's one of the top guys in our whole, not just in my organization, in the industry. And it was by, you don't have to know everything in the moment. Just be real with people. Right? Yeah. And I think our industry, especially financial services, we got a lot of frogs out there. I'm not going to get too deep. But I heard the name of the show today. I'm so glad to be here. But, <laughs> but I think people, I think some people are understand the lack of literacy. You can say up. Yeah, I know. It's effed up. It's, uh, I'll drop the real one here, but kids might watch it later. <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, I'm just kidding. But, um, but no, they know that people don't know and they're preying on that. And I think yeah. that's why we're staying trapped where we're at. So, but yeah, that's how me and Eddie met, man. Who are you, sir? I'm Juan. <laughs> I'm Juan. <laughs> Wait, Juan. who's what? Which one? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like I told her earlier, it's it's a two for the price of one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> With the real one stand that's out. That's the only Spanish you're ever going to get out of him. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> So, Wani, where can you? What were you doing before this industry? Because I know you're very successful in this industry. Um, I've I've known you for ten years. You didn't know me, but I knew you, right? You were one of the guys up on stage talking that I was like, I'm gonna be just like that guy, just just less Latin. Um, less, and, <laughs> less, less tan, less tan, less tan, less Latin. Good looking, I'm gonna be the white version of him. But what, what were you doing before solid. financial services? I did a whole bunch of stuff, but on you know, the legal side, it was. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey! 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 Bar, bartending and it was probably the highlight of my life because I was making two thousand dollars a weekend, eight thousand dollars a month, and I had the experience of what money looked like. Right? There was a there was some there was a common theme is that every single week I had to work because I didn't have no money, even though I was making two thousand dollars a weekend. <laughs> right? Because I have broke friends. So when you have broke friends and you go out, you don't want to go out by yourself. So you like sponsor, you sponsor them. I got you. I got you. Right? Yeah. yeah. You were that guy. <laughs> I was that guy until you start learning about money. I'm so for new sponsors. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I, I got into the into the financial service industry, and what I learned is that what gets you in doesn't keep you in. Because mm. I got in because I wanted to make money. I want. I got in because I thought it was a faster way. Because I was I was guided by. Like, if you want to eat good, you become a chef. If you want to travel the world, you work in the airline. If you want to, if, if you want to dress good, you go into fashion. And if you want to make a lot of money, you go into the money business. So I was, right. my driving force was money until, until I, that discovery is that what gets you in doesn't keep you in. It's got to be a bigger purpose. And I found my purpose within this company, or within this industry, because I it gave me the opportunity to get a restaurant, to get the nightclub, to go out, to everything that the guidance, the, the, what I came in for, yeah. he gave it to me. But I was chasing money, I wasn't chasing meaning. Mm. And mm. I had a friend that, his son died in a motorcycle accident, and I kind of called a time out in my life. And there was, there was an encounter between me and me. And I discovered my purpose that weekend. And I, I discovered that I wanted to inspire, educate, and transform people's lives. I never thought that I could do that in the financial service industry because I, I only knew how to make money in the financial service industry. I didn't even educate people. I was a salesman. Right. And mm -hmm. when I discovered my purpose, and I, I went to this class, somebody said, I said I was going to, I was taking this course with John Maxwell, and John Maxwell gave me an opportunity to mentor me for a whole year. And there was a topic was, what are you willing to give up to go up? And I said I was going to give up all my licenses. And some guy said, what a contradiction. I don't even know who that guy is, but I thank him because I didn't know that I could inspire, educate people in the financial service industry because mm. I was a salesman. 
So I said, if I'm any good, I'm going to go back into the financial service industry, but I'm not going to be an agent. I'm going to build an agency. If I'm any good, let me apply my skills. Let me apply my, my purpose. Let me apply my passion. Let me apply everything I've learned and now give it back. And this is where the reciprocity affair became. Everything I've learned, I, know, I, just, is I, I go through a philosophy of learn, do, and teach. Learn, do, and teach. I learn it, I do it, and I teach it. I like that. Boom. That's awesome. it. Oh, fire me up, awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Drop the mic. Mom's Drop guy. the mic. I think people, when, when, when they have problems, right? we, we deal with people's problems on, on a weekly and a daily basis. Right. But we, when we have the solution or present a solution, the thing's too good to be true. Ah yes, and, and yes. Andre and Andre mentioned that when he was in you know in the in the lunch cafeteria or whatever it was yeah yeah the meeting room yeah, the meeting, meeting room, room. Well, right, that he was right. like he was standoffish yeah. very you were like that wrestling bitch face girl in the back like don't talk to <laughs> right that's bad <laughs> that's, that's, I got all the degrees in United States I'm good so so we'll see I'm gonna bring you into this and and this is perfect because out of all of us you had a profession that I think is touted very highly as a lawyer. You still are a lawyer. Right. And, and in this industry, bringing up what you said, a lot of people are like, oh, it sounds too good to be true, or it's a scam, or all this stuff. And it's like, well, this is the best scam I've ever been part of, if it it's a fucking exactly. scam, right? Exactly. But, so you may have been thinking some of those things along those lines, especially as a lawyer, you know, <laughs> right? right? And, and so what changed your mind? Well, here's the first... I like to just be real about things for a second. So, yes, I was an attorney. Yes, I was even an accomplished attorney. I had left accomplishments and started a new thing. But in that moment, I was completely financially illiterate. I was an estate planning attorney and completely illiterate. That's wild. And uh, Johnny and Jason sat me down for my very first financial education ever in my entire life. And I was listening to them, but I was skeptical. The other thing I knew is they had just started out. I just happened to know that. Yeah. But they were telling me the truth. And at the end of the meeting, I, I said, I don't believe what they're telling me. I don't believe it. And I actually left. I know, I wasn't <laughs> smart enough to go, but I actually left. I'm going to say where I went. I don't care. I went to Edward Jones afterwards. Okay. And So you, did you work with them or did you just interview I, Financial advisors would send me client, send me clients. So you know, you hey, help me partner, with them. partner with them. Help me. You know, you do the estate planning piece. I'll do the financial piece. I don't think he's ever told me this part of the story. Yeah. So I actually, I, I think this is new. Yeah. I've never heard that he he went and spot checked. Yeah. Him. So I I went, and what was in my mind of what they were telling. There was a few things that were in my mind, and I was letting that advisor tell me what he thought, and then I asked him some of the same questions, and I knew that he had no clue about it. It wasn't that he said, oh, that's a bad idea. He didn't even know what I was talking about. Well, because you're talking about going into an industry where you're a producer, you're a salesperson, right? And, and you don't understand building an agency. You don't understand that aspect. Of, what do you mean you can, you can build your own agency? You can become an entrepreneur? Well, these, these guys were telling me simple concepts. How to create a synthetic Roth IRA and have your money grow tax-free for the rest of your life. Oh, that's true. How to not take when the market crashes, how you don't have to have your entire portfolio go down. Well, I think there's a big part of the story too, Andre, even in the beginning, just from a timeline perspective. But I remember when you were getting ready to leave and it was like the worst time that anybody could spill information on anybody. <laughs> I was well, trying to go home. Jason, we were pouring on this guy, you know, just talking about life. We never, not once, I don't think really, I mean, we brought up once in a while about what we did. But I remember leaving the office as he was leaving and I'm like, what a perfect time to just give a 30-minute presentation in a condensed form in 30 seconds. And, and I literally had my computer in my hand. I turned it, and I showed you, look, look what you could do, look what you could do. And I remember calling you yep. right after. I said, oh, my God, he loved it. He loved it. When, I know you weren't even thinking about it, but it's crazy because that happened, that conversation happened, what, three years, four years before you even decided to sit back down yeah. and have a conversation. And, and that's the four key piece, right? Four so four years later, I became a client. Wow. I became a client. Those things were lodged. In fact, I was the biggest proponent. And because I did at that point start doing some of my research and I was a big proponent. And when I felt like I needed something, I went back to Johnny and Jason and they came in and set me up with my first big, big, big like uh, financial services product uh, that I'm still in today. But to your point, it's embarrassing not to know about finance. Even if you're like on the outside, I looked very successful. 
right? I was driving the nice car. I, you know, I you had, had that matte black forerunner at the time. I remember that car. <laughs> <laughs> He's upgraded a little bit since then. But, uh, but, but <laughs> it, 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 the picture looked like I knew what was going on. I had no clue. Most None. people don't. Yeah. Most really, it's, it's amazing. Most people yeah. don't. Same for me. All, all my coworkers, all my friends were like, oh man, I want to be rich like you someday. And I'm like, I'm not rich. I just got a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. I didn't know what else was out there. Yeah, and that's that's what we do. The last thing I'm going to say is like, if you're somebody that that's sitting there thinking like, I'd like to be around people like this. I would like to learn um, financial services. I'd like to put myself in a different position. I'd like to help people. Um, you know, make sure you reach out to us, and I'll leave a link where you can reach out to all of us in the description below. I would say to everyone listening, right? Because you know, we all want to make money here, right? But be be before you pursue success, you must define it first. Right? Because when we think about entrepreneurship, it's glamorized on social media like it's the easiest thing in the world. But, you know, there's a level of becoming into a whole nother level of yourself. Right? Because there's another version of you that's out there. Juan said that to me the other day. He said, listen, let me sit, let me sit you down. It doesn't matter how much money you can make. You always got to be coachable on the way up. Right? Or where you are. I want to go seven figures, but... I was running away from the new version of myself, right? I said, Kenny, you're, you're, child, you're, you're, you're valuing who you are and who you need to become. Yeah. You're mm. valuing who you are and who you need to become. And, you know, I, I want to say something because I think it's going to tie it all up is, you said, Juan, I saw you 10 years ago, right? He said, I, I inspired you. Now, what does that mean? You know, you can only be inspired when you witness an inspiration. And being inspired is because you saw you. In someone else, yeah. and that mm -hmm. means if you if you see someone dribbling a ball and you and you caught you got caught by a ball by someone dribbling a ball, this is strong strong possibility you're meant to dribble a ball, Boom. right? If you, if you see someone uh, like playing that. the piano and you get caught by all, oh, because I remember when I saw somebody speak, he walked me like a Celine Dion song. I was like with tears, like that, just, that's what I'm saying. It was it was similar to that. Yeah. You're up on stage talking, and I'm like, I want to be somebody that can that can hit somebody. You know, like that can hit somebody so and change true. their life from their words. And, and I, you know, there's multiple of you in this, in this company. I just remember you in particular, you were one of the guys that I was like, that energy, that excitement, that confidence, right? It resonated with me, you know? And, and yeah, so. Yeah. It, it, it's easy to pinpoint your calling when you see it on somebody else. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll yeah. say one thing, just is very important, right? So we're talking about growth and having to evolve into where it's at. So, so when we started, straight up, and I'm telling you guys, this is the best industry in the world, not because how much money you can make, because you should make a lot here, you're in finances, you understand the money game, but the relationships you can build, and if the world revolves around money, you know what to do with it. But that's not what I wanna bring up. So when we started, our identity was me and this dude. He was 24 years old and I was 33. We never ran a business in our entire life. We were not entrepreneurs, and we had no example of entrepreneurship. That's fact. And when we started, it was us. But then we had to go into the lab and work on ourselves. So every day, looking in the mirror, and then you had to put down your vision, and all I ever wanted to do was build a big old team. I'm like, man, I love sports, I love people, and not everyone could be the quarterback, not everyone could be the receiver. So I said, man, what would my team look like? I was like, I want, what did we say at the table? Multicultural, speaking different languages. We, need, we gotta get the education out everywhere. And as we grinded and kept growing and growing and growing, boom, <laughs> this dude shows up. Look at the diversity right? in this room. So I said, mm -hmm. this guy shows up, and I'm like, Holy crap, this dude's an executive making over three, four thousand dollars a year. We were only making sixty grand a year when I met or hundred thousand dollars a year when I met him. So he he was farther down the road there, but we had grown our mind enough to be able to sit in the same room. Because you think sometimes you have to be like, oh, I gotta get to here first. That wasn't it. Our minds were the same. Then boom, it comes to this guy. And I'm like, oh my God, this dude's we used to be like, dude, this guy's like an estate planning attorney. We're like, how the hell is he gonna listen to us? Well, let's go talk to him anyway, he, right? He's the A-word. Because in he's our an mind, attorney. yeah. Because in our <laughs> mind, we, we didn't, we were in our mind initially, we're like, there's no way. But we said, you know what? Now ah, we're all the same. He's a good dude, let's go talk to him. Then he shows up, right? Then we get picked off our hard work to go share, to go on a trip, handpicked by top 12 people in a company. We were number 12 and number 13. We were like the Hey, we'll let you in the door type of thing. <laughs> then we shared a room together for one weekend. The connection we made, brothers for life. And I'm like, dude, same thing you thought. I was like, man, if I could speak half as good as this dude, mm. I got a shot. Yeah. I was like, this dude's awesome. But here's the reality. Then through him, we, I meet Ken Dog. Ken Dog's all rocking and rolling, right? So this whole thing formulated. And I'm like, God, you know what we got to do? We got to get our social media game up. I've been talking about this for months. Oh, no. So and then you show up. I'm like, this dude's got like 500,000 followers. This guy's a stud. I'm like, 
what the hell? Come on the side of the screen real quick. Get up. This is the real dude. Come here, dude. What the hell are you standing back there for? That's the dog right there, okay? But I'm like, what you put your mind to and what you're putting in the universe brings it all around. But here's leadership. All these dudes sitting here are the bomb, dude. They got, dude, you got to let your people be the people. If that means he's going to shine right now, if we're going to be a bunch of dudes who are going to lift each other up and win, if it's Juan's moment, we got to push Juan. And if it's yeah. Ed's moment, we got to push Ed. If it's Ken Dog, it's Ken. If it's Dre, it's Dre. But if we work together, man, what we're going to do in finances, that's cute. What we're about to go do and dominate in all sectors, that's what I'm excited about. And, bro, I'm being serious. You coming in our life right now, oh, man, you got me so damn fired up this weekend, dude. I mean, we're, we're in some random house. I'm just kidding. She's a new agent of ours. We're in New York, and we're like, can we do a podcast in your living room? And we're like, bam. And we're here, and I love it. I appreciate all you guys. I want to say that real quick before we go. There's no way me and my wife would be going, we're going, if it wasn't for all of us, and we appreciate everything you guys are all doing, because that's how we win, baby. Let's go. And, and, wrap it up. Wrap it up. We'll keep it short. We'll keep it short. We've got to get to the airport. <laughs> yeah, 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 let's go. Hey, no, but, 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 hour and a half. But a good, a good piece of that, that, that story you're talking about as far as the team that we have, like, dude, I remember that, that transitioning moment when we were at the Phoenix, standing outside of the Phoenix Library, he was like, like I think we had that conversation. He's like, dude, you gotta, you got to be the leader. Like, I'm going to follow you. You gotta be, so what I think it takes us as men sometimes, we, we, your ego your ego is not your amigo, right? It's not your friend, so you gotta kinda put that aside. But understanding, understanding the role and realizing, okay, this guy's got it, I'm gonna be the best follower. Because in order for you to be the best leader, you gotta be the best follower first. Learn that, that process. Fact. And then you surround yourself with champions who push you and make you feel uncomfortable in the best way possible. Any of you want to know more about how you can get mentored, how you can come into the financial service industry and be around like-minded people, we will leave it in the description and we hope to see you at the top. Boom. So. Thanks, guys.